Hi guys, today I'm joined by Hazel Gaynor. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Nice to be a Friday and finish school. Yeah. So, what's the weather like in Ireland today? You know, actually today it's lovely. It's one of my favourite autumny kind of days. It's sunny and a bit cold, but it's not raining because we had really bad rain the other day. So yeah, it's quite a nice autumn kind of day. If you know what I mean? Yeah. But like it looks sunny there. Yeah, it's really cold as well. It's been it, really hot though, hasn't it? So it's hardly felt like autumn. It's been really sort of a long, late summer so far. Yeah. Which has been good considering we've all been stuck at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hear you used to live in Yorkshire. I did too. I did. Yeah. Where are you? You're, are you north or south? I used to. Oh, you used to live in Yorkshire? Yeah. Where I about? used to live near Wakefield. Yeah, I'm the other side of Yorkshire, so I'm from East Yorkshire. My closest city would be York or Hull, one of those yeah. places. Did you like living there? Do you remember it? No, not really, because that was quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah. You haven't got a Yorkshire accent. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think I sound y Yorkshire or Irish or what? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not good at accents. <laughs> I'm a bit of everything. I think my, my <laughs> friends and family in England think I have a little bit of an Irish accent, but people in Ireland don't think I'm Irish at all. <laughs> I'm mixed. <laughs> So, um, Hazel is a, a author of historical fiction and a New York Times bestseller, which is really good, because if, if I had to die, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> um, she's written lots of books, such as The Cutting the Secrets, the Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter and the Girl Who Came Home. I can really see you on your shelf behind you, the Girl Who Came Home. Yeah. 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 Great props. Yeah. And <laughs> um, I'm really excited that you came onto my channel today. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Anytime. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so hopefully a lot of people will be able to see that we're doing this. I hope so, yeah. I think this is great. I love it when younger people, instead of us old ones, are <laughs> excited about books and about reading and writing. So I think this is fantastic. Yeah. So, John, start the questions. Yes, let's do it. Ask me all your terribly hard questions, and let's see if I can pass. Surely you'll pass all of them. Huh? Hopefully, you'll pass all of them. Hopefully, I'll get ten out of ten. I'm a bit worried. No, it's, there's eight questions. <laughs> ten out of eight. That would be even better. Yeah. <laughs> which is impossible <laughs> so question one what yeah. is the best thing about writing oh that's a great question i think the best thing about writing is when people start to read your books because books take a really long time to write so sometimes you can be working on a book for you know a year or two years and nobody's reading it you're just sitting in your office writing it so when it eventually gets published and people you don't know find it in a bookshop pick it up read it 
and send you a message to say how much they've enjoyed it. That's amazing. Yeah. And just written my eighth book and I'm still as excited when people start to read my latest book. Um, because that's, I get excited about the stories I want to tell. So I'm really excited when other people discover them and, and if they enjoy it. So yeah, it's really great when you find yeah. Readers, yeah, it's lovely. And making stuff up is a load of fun as well, which is why I love writing fiction. So you're just making your own little world and you tell it to other people. Exactly, yeah. And because I write what's called historical fiction, so it's based on something that really happened, but then I sort of make up bits around that. And it's really exciting then when other people find out about that true story and they like the way you've told it, it's really good, yeah. Yeah. And I heard, and what you just said then, that sounds like that you like, um, when it's came out and people are reading it and you like it, how they're just commenting on it saying it's really good. Yeah, it's really nice because I think, you know, if, if I read a book that I really enjoy, and I'm sure you're the same, you want to tell your friends and you'll say, oh, I read this really great book. Yeah. Um, so as, a, as an author, as a writer, when people are saying that about something you've written, it feels really special. So I love, yeah. I love meeting readers. I love hearing from readers as well. Yeah, that's definitely one of the best parts of being a writer. That's good. So, question two. Yeah. Your book, The Cotton Secret, is yeah. about fairies. Do you believe in fairies? Well, let me show you because this. Did you see this? Can you see it? Oh, that is the picture. Yeah. So that is the picture of a young girl in Yorkshire. Who, do, you want to, do, do you want to tell me when you're ready? So, in for writing The Cottingley Secret, I used this photograph. Can you see? Yeah. So that was a, a young girl. I think she was about nine or ten. And she took photographs of what she said were fairies at the bottom of the garden in Yorkshire. And I knew about this story when I was growing up and it turned out they weren't real. They weren't really fairies at all. And yet that girl, Frances Griffiths, did say throughout her life that she saw fairies and I have never seen a fairy, but I do believe in them. And I think there's something, and sometimes you catch a sort of light out of the corner of your eye. And I live in Ireland now, and Ireland has brilliant fairy folklore. So certain places in Ireland, you can't ever um, say, build a house on or um, change the land because it's said that the fairies curse it you've got to leave it as it is and I think that's brilliant so yeah there's lots of magical stuff about fairies in Ireland yeah so the Cottingly Secret was amazing to write to imagine being a young girl seeing fairies or thinking you'd seen fairies so yes I believe do you do you believe in fairies I'm not sure but when I was younger I used to have them um, so all the time when I lost my tooth um, I used to have this little wooden thingy, what, it was pink and it had a door that could open and I put it on my floor next to my wall. And yeah. I remember once when I woke up and there was, there was like chocolate buttons leading to a card saying, well done for losing your tooth on the tooth fairy. Wow. See? But <laughs> when I opened the... I oh, know that, so like, you know how you believe in like Santa and stuff, mm -hmm. fairies, so like when it's Easter, 
I always see that we've got the exact same little chocolate eggs in the cupboard. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and my mum, my mum just says, oh, a, fr a friend just gave us them. Yeah. No, oh, I think, yeah, look, there's definitely magic out there. I have to believe in these things. Or I really believe we have to. So yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely down with the fairies. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, you know, if you're not sure, maybe they'll come and visit you to prove to you that they're real. Yeah. You know, I think they, they there is magic out there. You should look up the story of the Costingly Secret. It's amazing. Look at them. Yeah. So cool. Definitely okay. magic. So, I'll go on to question three. Yeah. If you could be any of your book characters, who would you be? Oh my goodness, that is a really difficult question. Um, you see, I think sometimes I... You see, my books are written in different times, different parts of history. So in a book called The Girl from the Savoy, I wrote about a character I completely made up called Dolly. And she goes to work in a really fancy hotel in London called the Savoy. And she wants to be a dancer on the stage in the West End. And she's such fun and she has big dreams and I really loved writing her. So, I, and she had fabulous clothes. Yeah. It was set in the 1920s, sort of in the time. Have you heard of a program called Downton Abbey? No. So there's a pr quite famous program that was on the TV, and it has these amazing clothes Ooh. from the 1920s. Really gorgeous clothes. And so I think Dolly would be great fun. Um, but I actually really was interested in um, the story of Grace Darling, who I wrote about in The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter, who was a real person. She lived in a lighthouse just off the coast of Northumberland, up north. And I think she was really interesting. She was a really courageous young woman. And I think it would be fascinating to have lived some of her life. Yeah. So I'll show you books you to watch. One do you think is your favourite? Oh, that's a really hard question as well. You can see all of them behind me on the shelf. Um, do you know, I think the book I've just written is always my favourite. So the answer changes depending on which book I've just written. So this, this is my new book called The Bird in the Bamboo Cage. Um, and it's set in China, which was amazing to write about in World War II. And at the moment, that's my favourite um, because I've just published it. Um, so, yeah. Like whichever one you wrote last, latest, that's your favourite. Yeah. So it changes. Yeah. I think because you've just written it and you feel still Proud really. Yeah. Yeah. That is out and people are reading it and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So it's exciting to talk about it yeah i do yeah. love i love i always love the cottingly secret because it's like you said it's about fairies and that's just brilliant so that's a favorite too so i'm going to go on to question four and i feel like you're gonna say that's gonna be another hard question <laughs> because it, who is your favorite author and why oh, really hard question um so i've got loads of favorite authors so i i really love an author called uh, tracy chevalier and she wrote an amazing book i think 20 years ago called the girl with a pearl earring and it was it's based about around a famous painting which i thought was a really clever idea 
So she took a famous painting and imagined telling the story of the person in the painting and the man who painted her. So that was really clever. And I've loved all of her books. Um, and I also love an author who's a good friend of yours and your mom's, I know, Jill Paul. Yeah. Who's finding you. Yeah. <laughs> and Jill writes, again, really, really fascinating stories of famous women. Mostly she's written about um, the Russian royal family. She's written about the American president's wife, Jackie Kennedy, in the last one that's behind you. And yeah, I just find her a book. She's actually, Jill and I both wrote books about the Titanic. So the girl who came home, that's behind you, Jill also I wrote a book. It's a Titanic one. I love Titanic one. Yeah. Yeah, you see? That, that's the love stories, isn't it, from the Titanic? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how me and Jill got to know each other, because we both realised we'd written books set around the Titanic, so... And you were saying that they'd be all boring, like, no pictures, but there's, like, words, pictures, yeah. and writing stuff. Yeah. Have you read that? Have you read Jill's book? No. <laughs> <laughs> you should. It's an amazing set of stories about that you know, famous ship and all the people who sailed on it. So, I, yeah, I love, Jill. I love Jill's books. They're pretty. I actually cool. have a question which isn't in the eight, but when how you said that you and Jill wrote about the Titanic, who wrote about it first? Oh, I think Jill did. Jill did. did magpie of her. Huh? Did you mag magpie some of it off her? Oh uh, yeah, I might have stolen her. I totally stole her ideas, yeah. Sorry, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because, do you know there's lots of books written yeah. about, because obviously the Titanic's so well known and there's so many books written about it. So I was a bit worried when I started to write mine. I wasn't sure if people would want to read another Titanic story, but it's it's probably my best-selling book to date still, so I think people are just fascinated by it, but yeah, Jill got there first. I'll well, give her I bet, that. I bet they'd be like, I've read that bit in some book, I bet it's Jill's. <laughs> <laughs> they will be like, this sounds familiar. Yes. Are, you sure, are you sure this isn't the same book? She must have copied. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd got away with it, but obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> so, why do you like writing about history? Oh gosh, I think it's just, it's got brilliant stories, you know? And like the Titanic's a great example of something really tragic that happened, but there are lots of different stories and different experiences people had involved in that and you know I think when you look back at history it's almost sometimes you can't believe these things happened you know the world wars were so difficult and you know just different parts of our world and, and as a storyteller it's amazing to go and research and find really special details in libraries and museums so yeah i think for a for a storyteller history is a it's a great um starting point for ideas definitely yeah do you like history do you are you interested in history much mm. hazel i am <laughs> so, so. <laughs> yeah yeah, kind of. Not really, but not really. <laughs> like, so which type of history I was calling in? Hmm? Which type of history? Yeah, I can, do I like doing about history or history or reading about it? Yeah, and you see it's different, isn't it? Because I think 
like I, I like, that's why I like writing this style of history where. So, question six, I think. Out of all your books, which is your favourite? I think we did that one. Did we do that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall I change? <laughs> no, we did because I said it's always the one I've just written. Yeah. yeah, we did. You're tricking me. You're kind of sneaking extra questions. <laughs> so I'll go on to the seventh one now, second to last one. So, what is your next book about, and why did you choose this subject? Well, <clears throat> I. I haven't really started writing my next book yet. So, but I think I might stay in something to do with the Second World War again, because I found it really interesting. Um, but I do write, as well as writing books on my own, I write some of my books with another friend called Heather Webb. Um, and our next book together is going to be about two sisters who really don't like each other who get sent from America to travel to Paris, Venice and Vienna on behalf of their grandmother and it's about how they kind of try to like each other again through this important journey they're taking. So it's been really good fun to write and it's set in the couple of years just before the Second World War starts. So it's been really interesting and lots of fun because our sisters just squabble and fall out all the time. Yeah. So quite... um, that's like a book what I remember of what I read. Yeah. And it was from Jack and Arson. It was called The Worst Thing About My Sister. Ah. And I read some of it and they, the two sisters don't really get along at the beginning, but I don't know what happens at the end because I haven't read it yet. Yeah. Like one of them got her old sisters, you know the your eyeliner stuff what you put on do I think that's what it's called. She used that as a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you see that's what that's what sisters do. <clears throat> they annoy each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to read that. That's a Jacqueline Wilson, is it? Yeah. So we've had great fun and we've both got sisters as well. So it's been fun to imagine them falling out about silly little things as well. Yeah. I mean, I can't really fall out with my sister because she's a bit too young. <laughs> yeah, she's little. How old is she? She is one and her birthday is the, in November. Oh. Well, she's going to just be your best friend. She'll adore you because you're her big older sister, aren't you? So you'll never fall out, ever. Yeah. Yeah. She said my name as well today. She went, Hopey. Did she? For the first time? I think so. Oh, that's amazing. Because she normally special. just goes, ha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really special. That's lovely. Right, back to the reading stuff. Yeah, so, back to books. I'll go on to the last question now. Go on. Um, I like writing. What tips do you give to me or other 11 year olds? Well, I think that's brilliant that you like writing and that's really great to hear. I think the best thing you can do is try and have a little a notebook or something that you always write your your ideas in um so a nice book or you know with lined paper and you know keep it beside your bed or wherever you like to hang out and i just always say to anyone who wants to write don't don't think your idea isn't good or that it's never gonna end just keep writing write write what you enjoy write what 
you've thought about and because imagination is brilliant and I think if you have something to to write down your ideas when they hit you you'll always have them there in a book and you can write short things it doesn't have to be a full book every time you start writing so just write lots of ideas poems short stories um anything that you've thought about and keep it all in one place because then it's yeah. easier to find again yeah and just have fun it's really great fun making things up because <laughs> you, you're not you can't be right or wrong you know like in maths and in another subject at school you can be wrong with writing if your imagination you can't be wrong it's yeah. it's the, yeah have fun but don't be too good don't be too good because then you'll put me out of a job think about it <laughs> and also when you said um i can't remember what it was so but it reminded me of when me and mum read um a book about three days ago back at Kamal it's called my sister jody and there was a incorrect bit because when it had a <coughs> sentence um i think it was he but it was it wasn't a capital h ah oh. on purpose or by accident in the printed book i'm not sure okay but, but when you're writing i wouldn't worry about that because that can be fixed when you edit when you do your you know your your corrections so I think don't worry about that when you're writing things down, just enjoy writing them and you can fix that later. Yeah. How's that? Did I pass? Yes, eight out of eight. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They were really good questions. Thank you. Very good questions. So I want you to keep writing and Keep, keep interviewing writers because it's the best way to find out how people do it and why they enjoy it. So it's a really great thing you're doing. Could I um, sneak, sneak, um, sneakily put a little question as well? Yes. Um, it's, it's about authors, but which author do you think would be best for me to interview who could children who authors write with children Ooh, that's a really big question um do you know what i'll think about that um and what sort of things are you, you what do you like you like reading jacqueline wilson yeah but last time i wrote a letter to her she didn't reply to me really mm -hmm. okay so we need to find someone who's not she's probably just really busy because it's it is really busy when you're writing so let's that try and think about a year ago yeah okay so i'll try and think about someone who i might be able to ask and that they could um they could come on this and you could ask them some questions about how yeah. they write books for children is that what you'd like to do yeah yeah That'd be great. Yeah, let me have a think. Um, because there might be some writers here in Ireland that I could ask um, who yeah. are re really good fun and would love to chat to you. But let me ask them first and then I yeah. can let you. I'll hopefully find some, like, see if I can find some off like YouTube or Instagram. Yeah, and send them messages because we love hearing from readers. It's really great when you hear a message from someone and, you know, don't be afraid to say, hi, I like your books, I have a YouTube show, come and talk to me about your books. But I'll find some names for you and I'll send them on. Yeah, How's my that? mum said before, I can, if I can see if I can interview my favourite YouTuber, but I, I was thinking, no, it's probably not going to happen, she's a YouTuber, she's got 5 million subscribers. And you never know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. You've just got to ask, haven't you? Yeah. Well, it's been really great chatting to you, and you've asked some really great questions. I hope the answers were good. 
Yes, they were cute. <laughs> they were cute. That's great. Well, thank you, Hope, and I look forward to watching it back. Although I might not. <laughs> <laughs> I never like watching my interviews or listening to them, but I will watch this one because you've gone to lots of hard work to prepare for it, so I will. Okay, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. <clears throat> Keep writing. I will. Lovely to chat to you. Take care. Bye. Bye.